Though famed for hoarding hotel beach towels, Germans are quite open when it comes to licensing cars and tracks for racing simulators. It's for that reason alone that we find ourselves with both the BMW Z4 GT3 and the Nürburgring GP in a set of Corsa, race room racing experience and project cars. Of course, this means only one thing. Yes, it's time for a comparison video. Somewhat surprisingly, all the simulators require the same general skills to navigate the vehicle around the track. That might not sound so spectacular at first, but given the fact that we're not actually driving a real car, each game uses its own distinct math and our input device is essentially a glorified hand drill with a steering wheel attached to it, the fact that they are so similar should be as unlikely and surprising as Maldonado completing the entirety of the 2015 F1 season without crashing, or completing a single race without crashing. Despite the similarities however, those aiming for vitamin D deficiency of course will notice things that stand out from one simulator to the other. The BMW in race room racing experience feels the most sprung, top heavy and eager to move around on its suspension. I wouldn't describe it as lurchy or unsatisfying, it's just something the driver is probably going to be more aware of than in project cars or a set of Corsa. With P cars the car feels the most flat, with the car seeming not to move around that much on its suspension, its mass feeling very central, as a result in some ways the car feels as if it's closer to the ground and quicker to go from understeer to oversteer with no delay. In terms of shuffling, dancing and generally misbehaving, a set of Corsa seems to have the most movement, with the driver constantly having to make small adjustments to the vehicle to make sure it's behaving itself. Both Assetto Corsa and Race Room Racing Experience seem to require more counter steer when powering out of corners, with the BMW and Project cars coming across as the most planted, making corners like the Schumacher S a complete breeze to power on through. In terms of over the limit handling, both R3E and Project cars seem to have a similar feel. Should the driver lock up or cause a large slide, it takes longer for the car to regain drivable grip than it does in a set of Corsa. In project cars, large bumps in the braking zones have to be respected far more as it's easier for wheels to lock up, causing momentary loss of control. In conclusion, I can certainly see why some people will gravitate to one sim over another. Playing the simulators back to back certainly makes the differences more obvious and can make it feel a bit frustrating if you've built up a certain expectation based off whichever game you happen to play first or have been spending the most time with recently. To reduce this frustration I think the best approach is to simply think of each car and each game as its own thing. Just because it's called a BMW Z4 doesn't really mean anything as in reality each one is simply a physics object being moved around in a simulated environment. When it comes to picking a favourite, somewhat confusing things are the additional features found in each simulator. For me I absolutely adore the weather effects and the transitions of weather in project cars. The online competition in race room racing experience can be really good for instant jump in races and the set of Corsa runs incredibly well, loads really fast and also plays fantastic on the Oculus Rift DK2 if you ignore the issues with the menus. But in terms of sheer enjoyment factor, if I was forced to pick one and I was just driving the car offline by myself, I think I would rather spend the most time with a set of Corsa, simply because I like the way the car shuffles around a bit, and on the Nürburgring GP, the NGK chicane seems the most satisfying to be taken with the Assetto Corsa BMW. Having said that, I can certainly see why some people would pick project cars or race room racing experience, when directly jumping from one to the other, it's certainly the case that a set of Corsa has more of a, a gloopy feel to it than Project Cars and Race Room, which both feel uh, a bit tighter, but as a result seem to have a little bit less play on and over the limit. As a disclaimer, you can obviously fiddle with car setups, changing quite dramatically how they feel in each simulator. In this video we're making fairly broad generalisations, having played a bunch of the cars in each simulator and then jumping into the BMW. Each simulator brings its own qualities to the table and all of them are well worth owning if you happen to like driving games. If you enjoyed the video don't forget to click the like button, subscribe and then leave an abusive comment telling us exactly what we've got wrong. Thanks for watching and goodbye.